This next demo demonstrates how to style drop targets as well as source elements. Let me run the code. And now as I click and drag this image, you can see that the drop targets are styled with a different background color. You also notice that the opacity of the original image over in the first box has been set to about 25%, so it's kind of transparent. Now, if I don't drop this anywhere and let go, the opacity gets set back to 100% or 1, basically. If I drop it in a different location, the background image for the target goes away, and the image's opacity goes back to 100%. And also, if I drag it and then drop it back in its original destination, again, the background color goes away and the image goes back to 100% opacity. So let's go down to the bottom of the script and you can see how all the events are being associated. So to begin, the first thing that I'm doing is finding all of the drop containers and selecting them into this variable here called containers. Then for each one of the containers, I'm adding event listeners for drop, drag enter, drag over, and drag leave. Drag enter needs to have its default behavior canceled, but there's an implementation for each of the other events. For the sources, in this case I only have one, but this will set it up if there are more than one. It looks for anything that has draggable set to true. And then drag start and drag end are the events that are handled. So let's start off by looking at the code that's run for each one of the sources. And that would be drag start and drag end. Of course, there's the cancel function. For drag start, the first thing that happens, I'll clear this and then run it again. The first thing that happens is when you begin to drag on this image, it applies the drag class. And as you can see from this CSS listing, the drag class simply sets the opacity to 0.25. Then to make the code a little bit easier to read, I'm setting data transfer equal to the DTO variable. Now, of course, I'm setting in the ID on either text plane or text, and then managing the source container ID as I've done in the past. Now, before we continue on to the other events, let's look at the drag end event handler, because that's the other one associated with the source. Now, there's two class names that are in play here. The first one is the drag class, and the other one is the over class. The drag class is what's added to whatever you're dragging. The over class is what's added to whatever container you're currently hovering over. So when the drag operation ends, just in case you don't drop or maybe it's not completed through the normal path, this selects any one of the elements that have either one of those classes associated with them and removes them. It just keeps the UI clean. Once the drag operation is over, in case there's any of those classes still applied to elements that it shouldn't be. And as you saw in the last demo, the drag end event is the last one that fires in the pipeline. Now for the targets. For drag over, it will cancel the default behavior and then simply add the over class to the element. Now you might be thinking drag over is one of those events that continually fires over and over again. Perhaps it might be better to do this on drag enter. Well, I thought that at first too. But once you start placing elements within your drop container, when you hover over those child elements, the drag leave event will fire. And so even though you're dragging the source on the target, if there's any child elements that get in the way, it will effectively make that CSS class come off. So drag over is a better option because it makes sure that the over class is applied correctly. And then on drag leave, you simply want to remove the class. The last event in the pipeline is dropped. So here, as always, starting off by canceling the default behavior. I've got a variable for the ID that I'll be looking at, setting aside the data transfer object, and then I also need to look at the dropped item, so I have a variable for that as well. Now the code that you see here is just another way of dealing with Internet Explorer. So what I can do is go into the data transfer types and specifically look to see if I have any, and then if so, look at the index position of zero to see if that returns text. If so, I'll use the item within that type. Otherwise, I can call get data by using text plane, which is supported in any other browser. Once I have the ID, then I can call document.query selector to get a reference to the drop element. And then as long as I'm in a drop target that's not the origin, which is what this does here, I can append the drop element to the target. In this case, it's the drop target and then take that same element and remove the drag class from it. So this takes the opacity setting and removes it off of it. The last operation required is to remove the over class from being on the drop target. 
So by handling all these different events and implementing the logic that you see here, you end up taking into account just about any combination of whether or not the user abandons the drag, finishes by dropping it in a drop target, or never ends up dropping it by returning it to its place of origin.